content warning. This episode contains themes of body horror and extreme violence. There are more details in the description down below, but these themes occur towards the end of the episode. Stay safe, everyone. Sulfur. It's that burning sulfuric scent, that which causes the eyes to water before it even touches your skin. That's what makes it so recognizable. That's what makes that image in your mind, Azram, so clear. You feel as if you are bound again, shackles restricting your movement. The vulnerability of being without your weapons, your armor, and your allies. A small, dark room with a thick iron door. The gas pours in, and that horrid stench fills your nostrils, burning them from the inside. Pain like needles pushing slowly further and further, crawling up your legs, leaving a mark that still stays. It's what you consider a mocking reminder of those hellish trials. A first foray into the twisted mind of Garrick Landstone. You overcame this challenge once, saving yourself with a deep breath and quick thinking. But there's far more at stake here right now. As you look upward, the gas itself is visible, a thick blanket of noxious, sickly yellow fog that begins to slowly descend on you and your friends. Time is running out. All three of you, I have a clock set up here, our favorite mechanic. Mm-hmm. This is a skill challenge It always to is. escape this room. Once this clock is full, you are going to start taking damage. And this gas does a lot of damage. So, uh, for now, just to keep things in order, everyone go ahead and roll initiative for me. This will just allow me to go in order of people, and we will see what happens. 15. Fuck me. Oh. Three. Oh. Fifteen. 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 What's well, your actually, bonus? no, that's not correct. My bonus is plus nine. Jesus. So it's seventeen. Okay. Plus nine. Madara, you are the first to get this sense of danger from the slowly drifting fog above you, and that burning scent in your nostrils. What are you doing? Looking around, is there anywhere to go? Okay. Any doors? Make a perception check. This isn't your action, but it's just to give you a good assessment of the room. I'll give you all the basics, and then the higher you get, the more specific things I'll give you. 26. Okay. Immediately turning your head towards the main entrance, where there once was shrouded behind this sort of foggy exterior, there is now shut thick stone. You know where that door is, but where it once was, there is now a thick stone wall. With a 26, I'll give you that it's probably not impossible to get that door open somehow, but you're not sure how. Around you, though, there don't seem to be any other exits. There are vents into which this gas is coming from. There is the workbenches over there with various alchemical equipment and things to create um, certain things. And then there's also just these meadow of, of flowers along with the stone behind you. But that's what you assess in your current situation. The stone? The, uh, this, this the pale stone of moonlight. Oh, not but not that stone. the stone. Not that stone. <laughs> That'd be really awkward. Nobody <laughs> has touched stone. that stone. I was Nobody like, has I... touched that stone yet. I'm about to just fucking grab it. Um, <laughs> can I try to make a bomb 
<laughs> you what? absolutely to can. To explode the door. <laughs> this is going to take you a couple of turns, but it's not impossible. As Ladara leaps into action, dashing through this Holy field shit. of flowers towards the alchemical equipment, your alchemy training comes fully from, we'll say, uh, did you have like an interest in this from your time in the Blood Knights? Or is it something that you carried even beforehand? Because um, from um, your notebook, um, there is some interest on your mother's side in alchemy. I would say, yeah, it would probably stem from that. Definitely helped by the Blood Knights. Okay, yeah. The use of dangerous alchemy definitely then stemmed <laughs> from uh, maybe your time with an Assassin's Guild as you immediately begin to go into a search for the ingredients you need to get through that door. Go ahead and make me an investigation check. Uh, I'll give you advantage on this because it's a good idea. Nice. I'll give you an advantage because I, I like Because I like that. Because I like Cause it. Because that's cool. <laughs> oh. Cool. 24. 24. Okay. So immediately looking through these different drawers and barrels, you get that sharp smell of some form of, of combustive reactant. There's something in here that could make uh, that could make a bomb. It's not straight up gunpowder, but you're immediately remembering like, okay, if there's something that's going to explode, this is it. Then you start to gather the other uh, ingredients. I'm going to mark that towards a success. So you have gathered are beginning to gather your ingredients. Vincent, what are you doing? Oh my god, I don't know. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to take my scarf and put it over my my nose and my mouth. Um, provide some solace but but your eyes are beginning to water and even breathing in too deeply you can feel that sharp pain in your lungs um uh, you said that the gas is coming from like vents uh yes it surely is do they look like metal vents they do can i try to cast heat metal and maybe melt one i don't know what the, the melting point of this metal is but go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw it for me Cool. <laughs> All right. Not good. <laughs> Three. Vincent, you turn up towards the vents. Your quick thinking lands a good idea in your mind as you seek to cast heat metal and to melt that vent closed in a way to possibly buy you some time. And as you reach upward, you feel your hands slow to respond there's this disconnect from them as if they're not your own what they respond to your movements they respond to what you're trying to do but just barely and in your arms you feel veins full of spiteful ice oh my god and as you're trying to recall the words and incantations you feel your throat catch and the hours of joyous indulgence into arcane text and technique beginning to fade in your memory. What? Is there anything oh else you would God. like to do? <laughs> what is happening? What the fuck? <laughs> oh my God. Can I get Vince in a panic attack? Holy shit. Um, does that... Did, did I not cast a spell at all? Didn't did cast I? a spell at all. Uh, I'm gonna look around um that that uh stone is still still glowing right stone is still glowing i want to grab it okay i want to take it vincent you put your hands on this pale stone of moonlight and how big is it it's quite big like it it, it's probably how what's a good size comparison like Like a watermelon yeah like like a a little bit like a big big watermelon (laughs) like a big baby (laughs) Probably not that, but <laughs> like a like a, a fragment of a very big watermelon, except it's a nice pearlescent moonlight stone. Okay. And you put your hands that's on it. It's a big fucking stone. A big stone. Yeah, damn. Yeah. It's hell? kind of like a rock. It's a huge. When does it stop? Stone. Like when does stone stop and like boulder start? You know? <laughs> this is definitely not boulder territory. I'm googling it. Don't worry. <laughs> um, as you touch this piece of stone, that panic that was rising in you calms. Not dangerously so to where you're like out this of it, fun. <laughs> but you feel reassurance. And in the back 
of your head, which is also very interesting that you are the one to pick this up. You can hear something, but you can't make it out in this tense situation. But you have it. You have your bag of holding. You can put it in there if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, I'll throw um, the little watermelon sure. in the... Uh, I'll say, <laughs> for now, that's your turn. Um, yeah. That's all right? Yeah. That's all I got. Go mark that. Boulder fact check. Oh. Boulders Boulder. range from a size of 10 inches in diameter to really big. <laughs> 10 inches <laughs> in diameter. Science yeah, fact. Actually, we're, we're kind of getting... I guess we're in like science fact. Also, Boulder a territory. stone is apparently 14 pounds. That's so specific. It's a little heavier than 14 pounds. But also, it's kind of, it's a, there's a difference between a gem and a mineral and a stone, right? Yeah, so what I a a mineral. what I looked up is how big how big is a stone, and a stone is actually a unit of measurement used uh, in yeah, 14th like, century like England. Twelve stones, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And a stone is 14 pounds. Interesting. Um, and then I looked up how big is a rock, and that's when I found the boulder fact. Mm-hmm. Boulder, boulder fact. fact. Boulder fact. And that's boulder a rock fact. fact. And that's a boulder what? fact. That's a rock <laughs> fact. <laughs> Um, but unfortunately, content here on the shrink. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, yeah, that wisdom saving throw is your check. Um, Oof. that is a failure. Oops. As your turn ends, um, you that's not there's fair. a yeah. <laughs> there you you hear that sort of sound you can't identify, and another that sounds like laughter. Fucking so. Fuck. Moving onward, that's Azrim. That's you. <laughs> How many... Where the fuck is the smoke coming from? Vents up at the top. How many vents? uh, There are... um, Let me roll it for exactly how many. Eight vents. Jesus fucking Christ. That's a lot of vents. vents. Covers a lot of the room. All right. So I'm... As a bonus action, I guess, I'm going to tell everyone to get off the ground if possible. What? Um, What? I'm going to be like, if I'm correct... This gas, I've seen it before, and it burns. And then I like motion to my ankles and all the scars on my legs. <gasps> oh, to, to, to clarify, it, it is coming from above you, mm. but eventually you know that it will settle yeah. down and then build up. If that makes sense. So, uh, okay. like, okay, like, so, I'll like, stand on a chair or something. Okay, I'll stand on the table of whatever I'm working on, I guess. And then. Um, I'm going to cast three bolts of Eldritch Blast, one at each vent of, of, of the eight, sure. three of the eight. Go ahead and make your attack rolls. Um, it, the, this DC is less to like see if you can hit the vents. Um, so it's kind of low to hit it, but the damage that you can do to them. 21 to hit. 21 to hits. 28 to hit. 28 hits. 26 to hit. Okay. But all those hit, go ahead and roll damage. Um, the thing about these things is that they do have a certain damage threshold because you got to bust through the vent and then try and direct your Eldritch Blast to actually hit the thing that's creating these, this, <laughs> this whatever gas it is. So to do damage to the vent, you need to do at least 10 damage. Then everything will stick. But if you go underneath 10 damage, then... None of it sticks. You'll I'll, you'll see once you actually do it. I'll 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 explain it to you. That's how damage <laughs> thresholds work. Seven for the first one. So collides against the vent, but doesn't do any damage. You can do it. Eleven for the second one. So it takes eleven points of damage because it beat ten. Yeah. Okay. So does eleven points of damage to that vent. You can see it <clears throat> dent inward as you are trying to get further and further into it 11 points again nice. 11 points again one vent um would you have directed this all towards one vent or three i think if i knew like knowing that i would have to be a threshold i probably would have directed it all towards one then one of these vents like gets completely shot off of its hinges and clatters to the floor there is that slight increase in gas but that doesn't go against you it just as you've opened up this pathway to deal with whatever's creating this, you have also had to get rid of that vent. But you have gotten rid of one vent. Can I also hold my breath? Yeah, absolutely. As when you're able to hold your breath, which is <laughs> good advantage. for you as an Ergenazi because you don't have to stop holding your breath ever. <laughs> wow. Hold your breath indefinitely. Uh, back around, top of the round, Ladara, you have gathered 
your ingredients. As I'm sitting on top of the table. <laughs> You're sitting on top of the table as the gas is now falling and starting to collect on the ground in certain places. And you're not sure exactly what this does, but Asram seems to know what he's talking about here. So Apparently. as you are staring at this table and all of these ingredients you've gathered, I would like you to make a let's think. If you're trying to turn it into like an arrow, like an explosive arrow, then this would be an arrow check. If you're just trying to make like a oh. bomb, then it would be like arcana or nature, I think, for alchemy. Or dex... No, I don't think it's just... Ridiculous. We'll make an arrow. Okay, go ahead and make an arrow roll for me. Oh. oh. 24. 24. That is another success for you. As you yeah. are immediately into this process, mixing all of these reagents, mixing all of these chemicals and powders that you're finding, just purely based off of either something you can recognize by smell or just... A wing and a prayer as you are putting together Open. this bomb as quickly as you can. Um, that's your turn. Anything else you're doing? Nope. I'm just going to say. Okay. You're getting closer. You are getting closer I'm to gonna, making I'm going to just shout out and be like, I'll try to get this done as soon as possible. Please hold. You're doing great. <laughs> you're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> okay. Back around to Vincent. Vincent, you stand there as the gas is beginning to pool in this area trying to find some higher ground you hear time looks like it's running out Vincent not now shut up shut up shut oh, I up. think you're going to want to hear me out this no, time leave me alone, leave me alone. Um, I'm just I'm gonna yell at Azrum I'm gonna say, put your back into it. I'm gonna go check over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna give you. Like I gotta fucking do everything around I'm gonna, here. <laughs> I'm gonna give you bardic inspiration. Oh, oh, awesome. Making yeah. a bomb. <laughs> That's a d ten. Ten. Oh my god. That facet works. Strangely enough, as you yell out these words of inspiration, that escapes past you. Um, you are still able to give bardic inspiration. Beautiful. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and go towards the edge of the barrier, towards where the door is, I'm assuming. Yep. Um, and I'm going to very, uh, I'm in a panic, going to try to dispel magic. Make a wisdom saving throw. I have a dice for this. You do have a dice I have for a this. specific dice Please roll that this. dice for me, please. 14. But... Oh my God. As you get up against the barrier and you try and push dispel magic into it, there isn't even spell energy moving as your hands move and freeze. And you hear, Now, what did I tell you? Looks like you're in a bit of a pickle as I cross off one of these things. Oh my God. <laughs> but I can help you, Vincent. I can get you all out of there and ready to face whatever comes next. I can do it myself. Leave me alone. Okay. Azram? Azram is going to... What? It, how, how is the room looking? Is it starting pulling on the ground? What's? Does it look like any? it's like coming towards anyone? The gas is not filling the entirety of the ground, but it's starting to pool in the areas that it's pouring downward mm. and thus about to start spreading out throughout the room. So you would surmise that time is you're okay for time at the moment but it's mm. quickly getting to a point where you're going to start taking damage okay can I cast firebolt at the next vent at another wait, so the vent that I opened up what's the deal I just need to I just need to the vent is open it's pouring gas downward still Vents of uh, uh, like usually just keep uh, mm -hmm. like like mass amounts of air and stuff moving to kind of. I could be wrong <laughs> about this, but but basically <laughs> the way this is working from my perspective is this slight pulling slightly more gas, but I'm not putting that against you because that's what you wanted to do. Um, so there is an opening upward into a chamber. It's just that to look really to see like if there's a device, you'd have to be underneath that vent to try and actually do that. But you could try and go through with your plan. Um, How big is the vent? The vent itself is... It's pretty big, I'd say. It's pretty big. It could fit somebody. 
Jesus. Um, what you planning, bud? I'm gonna cast actually my hook. Okay. Uh, on the hook ceiling. Appears on the ceiling. Um, kind of close to the open vent, though. Gotcha. It appears like right on the edge of the open vent, like right next to where the gas is pouring down. I want to try to swing up there, but in my like swing to go into the vent, I also want to try to like push the gas out of the way, like blast air so that I push the gas like out of the way of the vent. And so that it's like the vents like clear for a second. And then I want to go inside. Gotcha. Go ahead and make a, um, go ahead and make on back and forth on which one this would be. Uh, I will say to use a concentrated technique is either con uh, is either constitution or wisdom. Because I, I've gone back and forth, but charisma is what you use for your warlock stuff. Mm -hmm. For air stuff, it's just you. So it's either your constitution or your wisdom modifier. Can I use my constitution? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. You got bardic inspiration. You can add a d10 to that, I think, right? Mm -hmm. You can add a d10 to this roll. That's an eight. Oh, okay. my. Oh. You swing upwards with the hook. And you try and replicate some of the movements you've done before to clear oh fire out of rooms or, or movements you've seen Awana do. And you push and the wind is not nearly enough to clear that area out. Instead, it just flows oh back God. downward to the room. That we are whiffing it. And I'm just swinging on the ceiling. You're just holding <laughs> on, swinging oh on the ceiling. Oh my gosh. At least I have a bomb in the works. It's okay. Fine. Which back around, oh. Ladara, you have yeah. got everything in place for the actual creation process of this bomb. A final step here to get everything right. Um, this part requires a lot of dexterity in order to do this, though. This is a straight dexterity check. You got it. This is to put everything together in a way that also doesn't blow yourself up. If you blow me up, I'm going to. If I blow you up. <laughs> if I blow you up. <laughs> Not like the dark blow yourself up. Yeah, so there's a like a failure threshold, basically, is what that means. Uh -huh. 20. 20 is what you needed. Oh, you thank God. are moving these pieces into place. <laughs> Ladar putting all of your training into literally <laughs> improvising a bomb. Oh like like you were in your kitchen and we're like, I wonder what to cook. And you're like, I can kind of make <laughs> like this. Under Extreme yeah. pressure. A, you're on chopped. You're on chopped. <laughs> yeah. You put together a makeshift bomb that oh is God. very powerful and very volatile, uh, involving a reaction that instead of lighting it with with fire, would be just once you break the glass that is in this tube, um, this this file that's in this tube, it will go into all the other components and blow the fuck up. So you've got your bomb in your hands. Um I will say, um, yeah, you can still use your turn to plant it, but you'll have to set it off next turn. Okay. Anything else you're doing or telling these two to I'm gonna be like, themselves? Guys, it's done. It's done, everyone. Um, p please get away from the door. Oh, that's right. It's not. We used arrow, so it's not a plant exactly. It's a. It's on the end of an arrow. So yeah. the next on your next turn, you'll be able to shoot that I'm arrow do steady against aim. the door. So. On your next turn, you'll be able to... Can I ready, steady, aim? Sure, yeah. You'll have advantage next turn. Um, yeah, everyone, please get away from the door. Azram, you're nowhere near the door, but... Vincent's I'm up here. Oh, I see you. Uh, Vincent, stay away <laughs> from the door. Stay away from the door, please. Okay, please. okay. I'm Moving gonna, to you, I'm Vincent. Gonna... <laughs> as you're next okay, to the door fine, hearing okay. this. As you're hearing, you have... <laughs> Vincent. He's so stressed out. <laughs> Vincent, there's a lot going on right now so and at this point stressed. you are past the point of overstimulated no in terms of um Christian really said fuck vincent huh? literally i'm not trying to do it on per it's okay. to build character it's, <laughs> that's, 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 for the that's what the it's parents always say <laughs> yeah. it's for oh, the narrative God. it's okay <laughs> you're all right no, you're okay. good yeah. we're gonna be great you Hear this, the call out to get away from the door. As this, as Astera is trying to 
get in your head and is constantly talking even though he's saying nothing it's just constant words and input like in your head of like i can help you i can help you you've got to let me in so i can help you <laughs> as you are trying to do this um what is your move vincent uh <laughs> boy i'm gonna get away from the door okay you scramble away from the door as best as you can trying Just to get, get out of the way because oh. i don't want to get blown up i'm gonna say enough enough that's enough stop it and i'm gonna try to use the spell magic one more time can i can i have anything that was a <laughs> <laughs> can i have anything that was a 12 as you push and you cannot for the life of you get out these spell these spell movements and you feel that ice now numbing your arms up to your chest you hear biting words that say you are nothing without me oh my god <laughs> talk about toxic so oh. why don't we readdress this and I can help you all survive as with that last failure the gas touches each of you no. I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw Cons- Constitution. 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 Oh my fucking god. I'm swinging in the air. Do I need to make one? Technically not. <laughs> Technically not actually, Azrin, because you're high enough to <laughs> avoid it. 14. 14. Not going to be enough. Mm-hmm. Adora? A natural one plus zero. <gasps> oh my god. We're in danger. <laughs> so thankfully we're not using the rules that double damage when you roll a natural one on those things, so you're good. Technically we're not. That's good that we're technically um, not doing that. You take that. 22 points of poison damage, both of you, as immediately oh God. that gas touches your it, just parts of your body and immense pain begins to wrap around you. What um, are you doing, Vincent? Anything? If I'm I'm assuming I just have a bonus action because the other thing was. It's kind of less action. combat at this point. I'm I'm do- limited to one action, but it's kind of like what you're doing in this situation. I'm, okay. We're not doing it by six what, second rounds. What is Azram trying to do? What, is, what does it look like he's trying to accomplish? Um, it looks like he's trying to get in the vent, like slither inside of it, or like yeah. destroy it. Slither, destroy it, but also slither inside of it. Azram, do you want to be big or small? Choose now. Uh. Small? Okay, and I'm going to cast Polymorph on you. <laughs> um, Make your save. Unless... Um, are you, you. I'm going to try. Okay. Make a wisdom okay, okay, save. Okay, okay. I'm going to try. I'm going to just give it one more shot. Please. Oh my god, it's a five. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You are Please. swinging oh my god, it's a five. <laughs> Azurum. Yeah, no, I'm still rolling back. You, you are swinging Azurum. I can't. And do Vincent anything. says this can't and makes a motion you've never seen before, and nothing. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. Can't okay, do anything. Vincent, I'm, I'm good up here. He's he's starting to not uh, be responsive. He's panicking. As you are standing, what you think is a good distance from the door. Azram, it gets to you after this. You see Vincent slowly shrinking into himself as he tries something and nothing happens. I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast in the vent and try to break it. Okay, make an attack roll with disadvantage. This is a, it's a high DC because you can't fully see if there's a device up there or if it's just like Wait, what, what's happening? You can do it three times if you'd like, because you have three Eldritch Blasts. The first one is oh. a 12. Okay. All with disadvantage? All with disadvantage. Soft thud. 12. This is so rough. This is, like, so rough. It's very rough. This has to be for the narrative, Christian. have a bomb. If, if I'm just doing it because I'm mad. <laughs> no. At the end, you're just like, mm, that's so, just so how it is. That's how D&D works I now. actually cursed your dice before we started. TPK. So. 13. Nice. Can I just go in? You certainly can. Yeah, I'm just going to go in. 
Roll a constitution saving throw. You can do it. Sixteen. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen is not enough, fortunately. <laughs> um, take. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, we're all doing great. <laughs> Same thing. Twenty-two points of damage as you feel your body just burning. In the vent. Uh, you you feel your body being almost like the needles. Yeah, you're making your way up the vent as gas is pouring down on you. <laughs> Did you not want to do that? Because I will. No, no, no. That that means that's. that's, what, that's, <laughs> like, no, that's what I committed, so we're doing and it now. All the way back around, Ladara. Please, Ladara, you watch please save as Azrael goes. <laughs> Head first into like, the oh, gas, Jesus and Vincent Christ. is going non responsive currently. <laughs> As things are going poorly, you have your arrow ready to release your arrow. I will be shooting it at the door. Okay. Yeah. Because of your extremely high rolls, you are going to roll a certain amount of dice for me. Oh, and that okay. dice is 12d8. Oh, points of damage. Holy shit. This is an extreme. So I automatically hit? You automatically hit because it is literally a door. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're so and right. Also, you that would me. fucking suck if you made all that stuff and then missed somehow because. That would be a little for, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Be, you're, you're a trained I assassin. Do, you can do. hit a door. Uh, like the, the broad Thank side you of for a stone. Your contribution door. <laughs> to my. Yeah. The thing about it is that it is a little dangerous. So, Vincent, can you make me just a retroactive intelligence check? Oh, yeah. Thirteen? Thirteen is enough for you to get some distance away from it. Okay. Uh, we will see what happens when it goes. I'll cool. go ahead and just do some business over on this one. What? Okay. What was that look Go ahead and roll some damage for me, Ladara. Christian has the worst poker face. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I can find any of my deeds. Oh, you need more? I might. Yeah, I'm like going to be fucking searching for like two hours. How many you got? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you want twelve, Seven. or are you just gonna do six and six? Here, I have, I have twelve. I have five more. Oh okay. shit! Okay, I we're doing twelve, I guess. You are doing twelve. I cannot I wait. I'm so you're gonna have to use your big brain, Michaela, to add these up. Okay. Oh god, I can't 12. count. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is that twelve? Yeah. That is twelve. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Roll your damage. <laughs> you like, get away from me. I don't want to look. <laughs> if I see these numbers, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> oh, shit. These liquid core ones are so cool. Unrelated. Nice. Are those, are those the Dungeon Depths ones? Yeah. Dungeon Depths. We are indeed sponsored. Dungeon Depths. Thanks for the depths. sweet liquid core dice. They're so freaking They're cool. They're amazing. Everyone should go check them out right now. We're using lots of their dice today. We Who's are, actually. actually yeah. You know, we're doing great. Uh, no offense. We really love you, good. Olivia. I think you're doing best <laughs> with the situation that's given to you. Because yeah. I'll say out of game, this situation sucks ass. <laughs> like, like, narratively, it's like wildly, I, I think it's cool, but yeah. like, situation wise, I get it. It mm-hmm. sucks. <laughs> like, like, don't worry Especially about it. Especially with the it's added, odd, like, but, effect you know. of like, Vincent actually being cursed. Yeah. <laughs> like, not being able to cast magic. 61 points of damage. <laughs> nice. This door had a. Damage threshold, 40, and a max HP of 50. (laughs) Madara, as you release this arrow, is there anything you say or do? Hold it firmly, and I'm going to say, this better fucking work. Stone chunks go flying, blasted down this corridor as this thick door meant to keep in just about anybody and keep out just about anything 
is blown to smithereens by Ladara's quick thinking and prior experience. Wow, as that's incredible. As you, Vincent, are rocked out of your, uh, out of this panic very momentarily, as all of a sudden there is oh a gosh. massive explosion that just barely misses that radius. It still pushes you back slightly, but you don't actually have to roll to get out of the way because you rolled oh high enough gosh. on your intelligence check. <laughs> Azram, you're up in the vent, and you hear this, you you hear this explosion and are able to dip back down and see that the doorway out of here is open and just fucking gone actually is probably a better <laughs> way to put it what are you all doing in this situation I would probably be like are, we're leaving yes unless there's anything you want to grab and I'm gonna start booking it like Azram we should probably get out of here what, what? I don't know if this gas is gonna follow us I don't know okay, yeah let's just go I guess like swinging. I'm like, okay. swinging. <laughs> you are able to drop down, run through. You can feel the gas starting to bite at your clothes and, and to attack your whatever exposed skin is there. But you're able to make your way down the corridor. The gas itself is not extremely fast, so it's not like chasing you very quickly, though it is still flowing in that area and it is going down the corridor. Can I but, try, you know, pushing some air at it? Make some rolls. Make me a constitution check. An air roll. Make an air roll. I'll, I'll add one to yours called air Eight. roll. Wind boy. <gasps> <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's a little bit of, there's wind that pushes it back. It, there is wind that shows up and pushes it back slightly, but it's too spread out and too weak in terms of velocity to actually impede its progress. Damn Though man. you all are fast enough to outrun this fog. It's not some extremely fast spreading substance, but uh, as you are all making your way down the corridor, Vincent, how are you feeling? Not good. He's like hyperventilating, like barely could get the words out, like just running as fast as he, his little legs will take him. Okay. Hey there, this is Christian, the Dungeon Master for the Strings of Fate. Thank you for listening to episode 27, part one. That's right, part one. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Part 2 will be coming out later this week on Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There is a lot that happens in these two-parter episodes, so please stay tuned for the continuation. But for now, some announcements. First, I'm going to take some time to thank a block of our lovely patrons. Thank you to Rin, Eskill, Rowan Ash, Kenzie, Toby, Jay, Cupid, Courtney, and Astrid. Thank you for being supporters of the show through Patreon. It means the world to us. This show is also brought to you by Dungeon Depths, a store dedicated to quality gaming supplies with character. You can check out their store for amazing dice, dice vaults, apparel, and stickers, including the soft pod stickers. Speaking of SoftPod, you can use the code SoftPod at checkout to get 10% off of your order. That is S-O-F-P-O-D. So thank you for sponsoring the show and being a constant supporter, Dungeon Depths. This show is also brought to you by Roll20. Roll20 is a virtual tabletop platform that allows you to bring your games to anybody. You can find them over at Roll20.net. Thank you so much. You may have seen this announcement in the soft cord, but we are doing an ad share with our friends over at the Goblets and Gaze podcast. What do a barbarian war criminal, an undead cultist, a pyromaniac goblin, a hot topic reject, and a bard whose family is very, very cursed all have in common? Well, that's very simple. They're the cast of Goblets and Gaze, a Pathfinder 2nd edition podcast set in a homebrew world. Listen to new episodes of their main campaign, Blood of Kings, every Wednesday. These chaotic gays undertake a mission that could change the world as they know it. Find Goblets and Gays on Twitter and wherever you get your podcasts. They are also a part of the Be Gay Roll Dice Network. They have a lovely team of diverse LGBTQ plus creators, and listening to their podcast has been very enjoyable for me, so go check it out, please. If you're enjoying the show, please be sure to tweet about the show using the hashtag SoftPod. I spelled it earlier, but that's S-O-F-P-O-D. 
We're working hard to get the word out about the show to as many people as possible. And so word of the mouth is our biggest form of advertising right now in that interim period of us figuring marketing out. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel as well as comment down below. Your comment prompt for today's episode is to tell me what you think of the arc so far. I think everything has gone wild. This is more of a saga with many arcs in the middle of it, if that makes sense. But I just want to know how everyone's feeling. Anyways, that's all from me for this break. Thank you for watching. Keep an eye out for Friday's episode. You absolutely do not want to miss it. Anyways, bye. Um, you make your way down this long hallway, the adrenaline still pumping your veins. Everyone go ahead and make a perception check, Vincent, because you were overstimulated, you're at disadvantage. 16. Ooh. Natural 20. Uh, 10. Plus 10. So, oh, 30. 30. Ladara, you're the first one to catch that as you are running, as the heartbeat is... For others, maybe pounding in their ears. And Vincent, there is so much going on in your head right now that it is very difficult to focus on your surroundings. Ladar, you've been in high-stakes situations before. You thrive under pressure, and you can hear that there are voices coming from the room ahead of you. The stop. Cellar. Stop. Stop it. What? what? There's people. There's people in the room in front of us. You rolled a 30, mm -hmm. so... If you focus, you probably would be able to hear what is being said. Everyone, should be quiet, be quiet. I can, I'm going to try to listen. You hear sort of echoing, just echoes of conversation, barking orders from a familiar voice. Get a move on. The door won't hold them for long, but hopefully the gas will tear them apart before that. Valentina's voice oh, oh carries God, condescension. That facade of concerned and hardworking family member melted away as there seems to be no more use to it. And you can hear that she's not alone. You can hear movement, like some kind of work being done, things being moved, but you're not sure what is happening in there. Is there anywhere to hide? In this room that we're in currently. Um, you would be able to find. Um, also, technically, for people who would ask, how does the explosion not heard? With everything that's going on, probably wouldn't be noticed because of how long this corridor is. Mm -hmm. So we're going to rule it like that. Thanks. <laughs> too, nice. too far away. Started. Because I don't want to throw everyone right into <laughs> a bad situation because of a cool solution. <laughs> So, Thanks, there you go. You're so nice. You can hide. So, everyone go ahead and make stealth checks okay. as you sneak back into the wine cellar. 17. Right here. 17? Mm -hmm. Right here. 9. 22. 22. <laughs> 22. <laughs> um, so, as you all make your approach into the wine cellar, Vincent... Still, you're unsteady in your movements as you, there is noise that is being made, but you can get a better look now at what is happening. And I'll just pull kind of from your perception checks to be able to see down further into this corridor. Um, Azrim would be, oh no, the electric lights in this area are probably, probably off at this point. So mm. it, Azrim would be the only person who doesn't fully see what's going on. But you can see at the end of the wine cellar, whereas you all start way at that far end there, the end of the wine cellar where you entered, you can see what looked to be lackeys moving casks of wine out of the cellar as Valentina stands at the base of the steps and directs them moving onward. Um, How many? Is it like... A whole horde, or is it like too many to count, or is it like just a few? It's not too many to count. 
there's a group of them. I will say, make an insight check, everybody. 19. 11. 18. These look like vampires, but their stature, their... Their like build almost is is very like ragged. They don't look like they can fight very well, though they're wearing those clothes of the nobles. Um, so, just that's like a like a danger assessment. The people that are actually carrying these casts, there's like a good group of them. They don't look they don't look like hot shit. <laughs> if that makes sense, they don't <laughs> look like they would be too dangerous mm-hmm. to you all. The one that looks kind of healthy. And and fresh would be Valentina, who stands over at the side as her ear perks up. She turns and looks further down the corridor. I know you're there. This can be very easy if you just give yourselves up now. Is she looking towards us? You said she was She's looking, looking down the corridor. Okay. She hasn't oh. seen where you are because you're all hiding, mm-hmm. like, like further down the corridor. It's still dark um, down there. She has some form of sight that you can tell, but she hasn't fully spotted you yet. Um, give me one second to set up this so you can tell me where you are at the end of that corridor. Okay. Valentina is going to talk at you all for a little bit. And during this monologue, you are free to try and sneak up and get closer to get into position to possibly attack her. But every time you move, you'll have to make a stealth check. And then every time um, you move, she's also going to get a chance to see you. If she sees you, this is going to go off. And then you got to write your initiatives until you actually attack. Um, So we're going to move into this. Yep. Madara. Can I cast past that a trace on them now? Uh, you can. Um, what's the range on it that they have to be to get close to you? Any creature within 30 feet of me. Okay. So as long as you stay within 30 feet of Ladara, you'll have pass by the trace. So you have pass by the trace on right now, Ladara. Bippity boppity boo. Bippity boppity boo, all three of you. <laughs> so. Just a side note. Um, I'm just looking at the stats here. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the D&D disability... Um, Supplement with overstimulation, it's just disadvantage on perception checks. Yep. And if I have something that helps me with overstimulation, like a friend that helps me keep me calm or uh, like some form of stimming. Yep. So I'm going to try to calm myself a little bit with the rings on my hands and okay. fiddle with them. You begin to fiddle. It's difficult because it's difficult. I'm not going to say it doesn't work right. because uh, we'll have to check in a, in a little bit. Yes. I'll say you're able to get rain in some of your overstimulation, but now while this plan is being enacted, there's still a voice just saying shit at you <laughs> like every few seconds telling you just terrible stuff. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's, your fault. <laughs> it's just telling you terrible stuff. Okay. Um, so that, I just wanted to say that. I was doing that. But yeah. Okay. So Valentina continues with no response. Listen, none of this is personal. I know that it might seem that way because of how we parted, Vincent especially. I accused you all of working with my cousin, and, and well, that's, that's unfair. I, I had no evidence besides my own paranoia. Yeah, so, so none of this is personal. It's just business. Go ahead and make your first move. So you are full movement. You can dash. Um, Ladar, I think you can dash three times if you use your full, full movement. So whatever your speed is times three. And then I will move your characters um, where you want me to. Um, Can I see her at all from where I am? To see her, Azram, you should make a perception check with disadvantage because it is dark. That was a 18. 18, yeah, you can get a basic silhouette of where she is, where Valentina is. While uh, Ladara and Vincent, you begin to move around the side stealthily. Go ahead and make stealth checks, both of you. (laughs) 
It's plus 10. <laughs> I needed the plus 10. I got a natural one. Oh, oh God. Shit. Plus four, five, and then plus 10. 15. 15. So she will get to roll to see. Oh, my God. A one. 36? <laughs> okay, well, Ladar is fucking gone. <laughs> Azrim, what are you doing? How many feet away am I? About 150 feet away. You are, you are as far as you can be from her currently. Um, I'm going to... Uh, no, I'm not doing anything right. No, I'm... I'm what? what is, so, so, like, what's... No, I'm going to stay where I am in case things go south. Um... So I'm going to stay where I am, but I'm going to cast Polymorph on Ladara. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm going to what turn... What is it this time? <laughs> what are we going to be? What animal are we today? Okay. I want to turn her into like... A menagerie. Are there any bugs in here that I can see, like flying around especially? Sure. Yeah, there's... Can you turn me into a there, cockroach? Yeah, definitely some, some like flies, <gasps> mosquitoes. Are there little bats? There are bats, I would say, in, in a dark <laughs> cellar, especially in, in a vampire world. I would say... It, to like a fly or a mosquito, something that if she flew up near Valentina, it wouldn't really be noticed. Mm. Okay. Just pull up the speed on the fly real quick to let me know what it is. Oh, as... the speed of a fly. But as but you like are... in D&D, right? Like, in no, D&D. Like... Yeah, not in real life. <laughs> like, I can't... Fly D&D 5e. Fly <laughs> D&D 5e and it'll pull it up. That's so funny. Black fly. That's fine. I could be an attack fly. That's okay, fine. well, I don't know about that one, <laughs> but, <laughs> but just a regular know. old fly is probably it's a regular, fine. Fly. It's a regular fly with a machine gun. It's, yeah, it's a regular fly, just very it's like angry. A, with a knife, yeah. With a knife taped to it. What's the 20 speed? feet. <laughs> Twenty feet. Okay. Um. <laughs> so you can move. I would say your same like sixty feet per turn Boo. to get into position, but you can fly through the shelves, so nice. that might be able to help out a little bit. All right. Immediately though. Because they're all perception on my end. Great. Cool. You turn to a fly, Ladara, and you hear, Vincent, I see you. May as well come out. Everyone else is still in position. I assume that your friends are nearby. You can, like, disguise yourself and, like, distract or something. What are you doing, Vincent? I will say this entire time. This is happening. The words that are repeated to you are, I can help. I can give you your magic back. I can make it stronger. Okay. We could kill her. Just us, Vincent. That's a lot. You just have to let me in a little bit. No. Just open the door. Just a crack. <laughs> just say the word, Vincent. He's ignoring. Yeah, he's going to ignore all that. For now. Okay, so Valentina, you feel this, the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand as you can see that silhouette looking in your direction. The last thing she said was your friends are nearby, right? Uh, you're pro- yeah, she's assuming she says, your friends are probably nearby. So, why don't you come on out? I'm going to stand up. And I'm gonna walk out into the center. Okay, why don't you do that? And I'll say, No, I came alone. Make a good deception check for me. <laughs> can I <clears throat> use a luck point? Certainly can. Way worse. Cool. <laughs> I'm rolling so bad today. I'm gonna. It's all building up to one good roll. Yeah, I'm putting when you really this need it. Dice in jail. Um, I rolled not good. I rolled a twelve. Okay. Smiles, and looks at you, and says, "Now we both know that's not true. I don't fully know why you, of all people, would want to come down here alone." can't really think as to why that would be the best move for you. So, my only assumption is that Nadara and Azram are waiting to pounce, perhaps to to drive another dagger through the back of my head. That's where you're mistaken. See, I came to speak with you. 
Well, while this is happening, yes, I would like to use an ability I have. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not I'm not completely in, alone, so I don't know if this technically would work, but I have a thing called Words of Terror. Okay. Where if I speak to a humanoid alone for a minute, they become frightened of me. If they fail a wisdom saving throw. If they fail a wisdom saving throw. <clears throat> and if they're attacked, you know, it ends, but that's okay. right. That's fine. We'll talk, and we'll, we will see how long we get to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so... You wanted to speak with me? Yes. Let's say I believe that. What is it you have to say to me? Alone. See, I need you for something. Go on. You uh, took a chunk out of my friend. And I was coming to see if you had something to fix him with. I can't believe Vincent just friend zoned her I know. She, he's not going to say it in front of Valentina. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> An unfortunate side effect of my state of mind, which I genuinely wish to apologize for. It's uncalled for. Kind of seems like it wasn't your fault. Well, no, but... In the, you know, grand scheme of things, it kind of was, though. Yes. At the end of the day, my hands were on the other side of the dagger and then if you want to go even further back technically i made the concoction Mm -hmm. so what's done is done so i wish we could let bygones be bygones and just move on to this present business which i implore you to believe me is purely business right now i do have a question now why are you down here i have my own tasks to accomplish but I was also able to tell that somebody was poking around in my old laboratory, so I decided to kill two birds with one stone. Thought the gas would do it. Obviously, I underestimated you all. So, here we are. First task is pretty much done. Second task lies now in you all. Meanwhile, Ladara, Azrim, what are you doing? Dara is still flying. I'm still just waiting to pounce. 10, I'm a little fly. 20, 30, <laughs> I'm a little 40, fly. 50, buzz buzz. 60. You can get right up to there with your fly movement. So you land on Cute. a cask, getting very, very close to Valentina, but still not within stabbing distance. Okay. No stabby, stabby yet. You're staying back here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Towards the back, Azrim, you are standing, like, hiding behind a stack of barrels that is at the far end of the room listening to Vincent talk in the middle area. Now, I know when I'm outmatched. To take all three of you on by myself would be quite foolhardy on my part. So I'm really not looking for an all-out fight, at least. Not in this moment. Then you should listen to me. And give me what I want. Which is that, an antidote? Yes. Sadly, it doesn't exist. I made the poison. Made it to kill. Didn't really think I'd have any need to cure anybody that I, um, pierced. Have we well, even killed anyone with that? She even kill- Like, she hasn't even successfully killed yeah, anyone. Yeah, she really hasn't. <laughs> wow. At least not that you know. <laughs> If you can make a poison, then surely you can make an antidote. Oh, of course. Your supplies are back there, aren't they? Yes, but, I mean, currently it's flooded with deadly gas. No, so no, whose fault is that? Mine, again, mm. but I can always get new supplies. You see, your friend Renair, he most likely will need an antidote. Though the poison won't kill him, it surely will have a lasting, debilitating effect on him. So you might want to get working on that. Mm, I didn't do the research, me. but you're yes. the one with all the expertise, aren't you? Confused? Are you asking me to join your side and I'm help you develop you? I'm telling you that you need to make an antidote, or else. Make my, an intimidation check. My eyes will turn black with thaumaturgy if I can cast thaumaturgy. If not, but... fortunately, That's even right. yeah, fortunately <laughs> it's okay. not. you. De- it, it definitely is. You feel like you're trying to. 
and then in the back of your head, this this shitter voice that's like, ooh, very scary. Ah! <laughs> Make it scarier. Bitch. Come on. Intimidation, you said. Yep. 21. She kind of takes a step back. As now her eyes are kind of darting from side to side. Is that a minute? Um. Yeah, well, I'll say that intimidation check will trigger the... Uh, thing and because it's with your words, um, yeah, give me a second here. Uh, what's your wisdom save? It is not that high, it's a 16. It's a natural 20. No, oh, that's good, but she's still slightly intimidated. She's Man, backing up the steps as she says, No, oh, you see, this is where I made my mistake last time, is I thought I could take on something far bigger than me but just myself I'm not going to make that mistake again Ladara yes. you want to begin to make your way up mm -hmm. 20 Ladara gets in range as a fly begins to buzz 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 towards Valentina as Valentina begins to take steps backwards up the stairs and say so, I'm willing to cut my losses here. Or at least get a little help with the situation. Nope. What's going on? <laughs> I'm going to snap Ladara out of fly form. I'm going to cut her head off. No! Make an attack Holy with shit. advantage. <laughs> on Valentina, make because an attack with dagger? advantage. Mm -hmm. With your poison with dagger poison on dagger. Valentina. She's completely surprised, so this is a auto crit. If it hits... <laughs> Um, that's a 19 plus 9. Jesus. Absolutely hits. Go ahead and roll your damage, which is uh, double. All the damage oh. dice are doubled for crit because so she... And I have sneak attack, right? And you have sneak attack. And you have your poison dagger, which I will roll the constitution save for. This is about to be wicked. <laughs> and natural one on the constitution save, so she takes all the poison damage as well. Okay. It's so like, fucked. Vincent's like, no, you don't. And then, yeah. um, I might need a little dagger. help. This is a lot of damage. Do we this is a lot double the dice or double the roll? Double the dice. Okay. How much you need? You girl? roll double the dice. So roll your... You need some d6s? Is it six? <clears throat> Everyone can hear. I'm going to do the 66 first. Oh, not that much. Don't we hear that much? <laughs> Fuck that. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so easy to count. <laughs> you got it. Sixty-one. Ooh. Sixty-one points of damage as Vincent, you watch a little fly buzz around Valentina's head that suddenly shifts into a trained assassin oh my God. as Ladara plunges the dagger into her neck and tears it across oh the throat. Oh my God. You see rotted black blood spurt from the throat as Valentina <laughs> Tyron yells out Tyron! upward. Oh, he's dead. Um, as you see her body go limp, you watch it begin to turn to mist. Oh my god. Um, which I need you all to make an arcana check very quickly. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. I said, I thought I killed you once, bitch. <laughs> well. Tyron comes out dibs. <laughs> An eight. eight. Five. Oh, nice. You're not sure what is happening as she is turning to mist. Um, she looks near fucking death. Um, you might know some things about vampires just in general off the top of your head if you can remember it, but you'll, I'll give you a chance to roll Arcana again on your next turn to figure out what is happening with Valentina at this moment because you just fucking dealt... A lot of damage to her. <laughs> um, but as she yells out these words and begins to try and shove you off, she screams out for Tyron. You had left Tyron in a state <gasps> and falling 300 feet oh, to one's death <laughs> usually leaves one's body quite scattered. 
your limited understanding of the vampiric form as you question its regenerative ability and thus keeping an eye out for this loyal lackey of Valentina to strike either by dagger or by bullet. It's not until the cellar's entrance, the light pouring down that limited red and yellow sky is blocked by a massive shadow that the reality sets into place. A giant hand of flesh, bone, and congealed blood. Pull no! itself <gasps> through the cellar entrance. Oh, you're Are kidding me? Start vomiting. Why does it look like that? <laughs> unnatural. <laughs> this unnatural shifting movement pulls itself down the cellar steps. And it's more accurate to say that whatever creature moves now through the rows and rows of casts is more akin to parts rather than a living humanoid. What was once Tyron approaches you all in massive (laughs) steps. And to gaze upon its form is to invite horror into your mind as it (laughs) (laughs) so let's take a quick break (laughs) 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 (la